NASDAQ um, um, cash index, the mini size one, the uh, the MNX minus spider, that sort of thing. And then um, you can see a chart of that difference. Now, when you're working with charts and pairs trades, I want you to look at a line chart. I don't want you to look at uh, I don't want you to look at open, high, low, close. The reason is that if you are the, the reason is that the high, low, close for a pair on thinkorswim uses the high. It compares the high of the M and X with the high of the spiders, or the or the high of the spiders with the high of the Q Q Q Qs. Okay, and the low and the low, okay? But in real trading, the, the high of the spiders doesn't necessarily correspond at the same time. In other words, it doesn't happen at the same time as the high in the QQQs or the MNX, okay? And, and conversely for the lows, they can happen at different times of day. So if you look at an open high-low close chart for a pair, you can get misleading a misleading picture about what you could actually do that pair for, okay? Um, so, again, this is going to be easier to show you with a picture. A picture is worth, well, 10,000 words in this case. But it's what you want to do is go to a line chart. To go to a line chart, you go to, um, on TOS charts, go to the upper right-hand corner, select a style, and then chart type. And if you have a bar or a candle chart, up there, switch over to line. Line is just going to be close to close. Because we have the close of the bar, in other words, it's the closing closing price of the bar for spider minus closing price for the Qs, or closing price of the MNX minus the closing price of the spider. Um, that's going to show you close to close. Now, you might be able to get a different execution price than the closing prices, but the point is you won't be misled into thinking you can do a better price. If you just look at an open, high, low, close for a pair, you see it b bouncing all over the place. You go, oh, trading this stuff is easy. No, it's not. Okay? <laughs> you know, because you see these fluctuations every day that seem to be, you know, hovering around the, the closing price. And, oh, gee. No, it, it's not that easy. Um, all right. And let's go, let's just type in... Um, Okay. So right now you're looking at a chart of M and X versus Spider. That's fine. And you switched over to a line chart. Can you switch over just for the sake of argument, Matthew, to the uh, to a high low close? And I just want to show you show folks what the problem with doing that is to a bar chart. Mm -hmm. Perfect. When you see that, you think, oh gee, I would have sold in that high there and bought in the low there. That's easy. It, it doesn't work that way. These pairs don't trade like that. So this introduces a lot of false price information for a pair. So let's go back to the, the style button, and let's take a look at the line chart again, and I will show you what I like to see on a pair. Um, if you look at a period between, let's say this is a good example, a period between, let's say, um, uh, the December expiration, the December 07 expiration, uh, if you move off to the left, a little bit right around, uh, a little bit past there, right around there, right around there, out to, let's say, the um, March 08 expiration, you see that, that's a lousy pairs trading environment, in my opinion. <laughs> the reason is that when I look for a good pairs trading opportunity, I like to see oscillation from a pretty reliable mean around what looks like an average. And now that's my style of pairs trading. There are other people that like to do a little bit more longer term trade. So how would you have capitalized on a longer term trade here? In this M and X minus spider trade here, when you have a pair, which is back in the, the December um, expiration, got as high as, what, about uh, $65 or so, and then dropped all the way down to about 40 What that represents is the MNX dropping more for the spider 
rising faster over that four month period. Okay, either one of those things, and it happened so that the um, I think the, the 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 spiders were outperforming. What was happening is that as the spider price is stronger relative to the MNX, or in other words, the in other words the as the spider's price is higher relative to the MNX price, that pair trade drops in value. So if you had been lucky enough to short the MNX on right after December of 07 expiration and buck spiders, and you were smart enough to then cover that pair trade um, in the middle of um, March of 2008, you would have picked up about 20 points or so. That would be $2,000, okay? Um, for let's say 100 deltas in the MNX versus 100 deltas in the spiders. So that's what you're betting on, okay? I want to make it really clear about what you're buying and selling, because in the class yesterday we had to go over this a few times. When you're looking at a chart of MNX minus spider, and you see that, and you think that pair is that spread price is going to go down, you will sell the first symbol, in this case MNX, and you will buy the second symbol, in this case spiders. Let's let's take a different example of that, Matthew. Let's widen back out, and then I want to open it up to any questions that have um, accumulated thus far. So if we, what I want to show is, is a case where the exact opposite happened. Now look what happened in from March expiration to June expiration of 08. In other words, March expiration. You can just leave it leave it on this this time scale. That's not a big deal. What you can do is see it rallied all the way from 40 and went back up to about 65. That's a case where you would want to, wanted to have bought the MNX and sold the spiders, okay? So the idea is that you are buying one product, one stock or one index, and selling another, okay? Now, if you want to trade more sort of mac or you know macroeconomic things, you think, well, I think now the the spiders are going to outperform. You see right here, the, it's not really the, the 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 pair there isn't really moving in any clear direction. It's not clearly moving up, and I'm talking about everything after let's say June of 08 expiration, and it's not really going down. It's kind of oscillating around an average of about 58. If you thought that oscillation was going to continue, if the price of the MNX minus the spider dropped to about 55 or so or below 55, you might consider buying MNX and selling spider. And if it rallies up to 60 in a few days, you would sell the MNX, buy the spider. Okay. Matthew, are there any questions that have popped up here? Because I want to make sure that everybody's clear about what we're looking at and what you're buying and what you're selling. Okay. Uh, do you have a question? A short-term trade or a long-term uh, The question is, is that a short-term or a long-term trade? I trade these. It depends on the trader. depends on the trader. I, I typically do these pretty short-term. And when I mean short-term, I mean sometimes intraday, sometimes a day or so. For the way I look at pairs trades, is that it either works for me pretty quickly or it's not going to work at all. So if it's not working, um, uh, you know, let's say I put it on Monday morning and, you know, and if, I, if I'm looking at a shorter term oscillation, if I don't see that working by Monday afternoon, uh, I, I, I may consider holding it until Tuesday, but I would also strongly consider just taking it off. 